Hello, welcome back to our coverage from AWS reInvent 2018. My name is Ian, I'm with the AWS Developer Evangelism team, and over on the far end of the desk, I have my colleague Adrian Hornsby from the same team in the Nordics. Hello, the internet. Hello. Uh, for this last session, we're going to bring you something a little bit different. One of the uh, areas of content here at reInvent is breakout sessions. And at this year's show, we have over 2,000 breakouts across six different venues, so it's quite a big part of the program here. A lot of these breakouts are delivered by customer speakers rather than by AWS employees or Amazon team members. And I'm really happy to invite and welcome to the stage Billy and Jimmy from uh, Disney Streaming Services who are going to be speaking in one of these breakouts later in the week's content program to talk to us a little bit about their usage of AWS for digital user engagement, which is using one of our services, Amazon Pinpoint, to connect with their customers through various channels and to encourage their customers to engage with their content. And we're going to dig into that for the next 20 minutes or so and explore it a little bit. Uh, before we do that, though, can I ask you both to introduce yourself, explain a little bit about your roles at Disney Streaming Services, and maybe talk a little bit about what Disney Streaming Services is as well for the audience here. Sure. Uh, my name is Billy Liu. I work at Disney Streaming Services in engineering. Uh, so Disney Streaming Services is a relatively uh, new organization. Uh, we power uh, two important key products uh, for Disney, the Walt Disney Company. Uh, one of them is ESPN Plus, which was launched in April of uh, this year. Um, and so that is a premier sports streaming product for ESPN content. Uh, the second product that we are uh, playing a big part in for Disney is the Disney Plus uh, product, which is scheduled to launch in 2019. Um, so that's a direct-to-consumer subscription video-on-demand product uh, that will be delivering uh, Disney content. Um, so uh, you mentioned the talk tomorrow. Like one of the talk, the talk tomorrow, we're going to be focusing on engagement and messaging pinpoint, and specifically how we use push notifications for Major League Baseball and the National Hockey League um, to engage our customers uh, in their applications. I'm Jimmy Tam. I'm a developer on the messaging engagement team. Um, at Disney Streaming Services. And I work with uh, Billy here. Great. Uh, can you uh, describe a little bit about the problem space? So you're obviously using one of our services to solve this particular set of challenges, but I'd love to hear more about what those challenges were and what prompted you to start thinking about ways to improve digital engagement with your customers, with your users. What was the problem that you were trying to address here? Yeah, so we had a lot of key challenges that we were figuring out uh, within, uh, within user engagement. Uh, one of these uh, ways to engage our users is through push notifications, like I mentioned. So, you know, ideally for our sporting fans, we want them to be at the ballpark viewing the game live. Um, and Major League Baseball has a companion app called the Ballpark app for customers that are at the ballpark. Um, and uh, we send push notifications and power these push notifications to the ballpark app to let customers know, hey, there's, um, you know, your favorite pitcher is pitching tomorrow, like, you should go to the ballpark and check them out. Um, or, you know, if they're at the ballpark, we send them push notifications to say, hey, like, something interesting is happening here, go check out X, Y, and Z. Um, and if they're not at the ballpark, um, what we'd love them to be doing is just watching the live video stream, right? So um, within the mobile apps, we have features like, hey, please let me know when my favorite team is going to come uh, live so I can start watching them streaming. Um, or features there where um, for, for uh, our hockey league, National Hockey League, we have push notifications that say, hey, you know, you're not watching the game right now, but you know, there's this feature we call live look-in that says, hey, like something really awesome is happening right now. Click this, we'll drop you into a live video stream of like the important thing that's happening now, like come check it out. Um, for, the, for the live game alerts, I mean, there are two big reasons why we want to send push notifications. One of them is to allow users to know when a game is about to start, so they, they're reminded to tune in. And if they're if they're not available to tune in immediately, we want to send them like interesting moments or key moments or uh, clips of the event, so they they could uh, tap and tune in right where the push notification left them off. Cool. Uh, what about design considerations then? So when thinking about building a solution like that, what are the decision criteria that you had? What were the design considerations, constraints, or maybe opportunities that you wanted to seize by implementing a new system? How did you think about that? Right. Uh, we had a lot of considerations. Uh, like we mentioned, uh, because we wanted to let users know um, critical events and went to allow them to tune in and watch where the push notification left them off, speed was an incredibly important criteria for us. 
Um, so we wanted to be able to send a push notification right when the event happened, and we want the user to receive the push notification right when it happened. So if they decide to click and watch the live stream, they're able to pick up right where the notification was put off. So it's, speed was a very, very important aspect of it. Another uh, related aspect to speed was um, because we have um, essentially interests, uh, our fans have specific interests, they might be interested, uh, baseball fans might be interested in the Mets or the Yankees or both. We need to be able to, and two teams play each other, we need to be able to create these, uh, these essentially segments as quickly as possible so that we can target the right customers. Um, so speed is a, speed in getting the push notifications out is really important, but also speed in creating the segments and creating, creating the audience that we want to target is really, really important. And so we have a lot of these events, all of these games, whether they're hockey games or baseball games, all happening at the same time. Yep. And so we have events that you know, are happening concurrently, right? So you know, in one game, um, a score change could be happening, or in another game, there could be you know, a perfect game happening. And so not only like, do we want to get these push notifications out to our customers immediately, so that when they tap on them or engage them, they're relevant to like right now, but we have a whole ton of them that are happening um, and so we need to be able to send all of those at that top speed that we're looking for. What about closing the loop? Is it important for you to be able to figure out which customers have responded to notifications, maybe amend your campaigns or do something else with that data about response rates? Is that a feature as well? Yeah, for, for sure. Like we have, um, you know, talking about the baseball app, app at, and the NHL app. Um, they're a multi-team app, right? So you have Yankees fans and Mets fans that are all using that same app. And so, you know, there, there's a key consideration in here. It's like, can we segment this data, like how, user, how many users we're reaching through these push notifications, can we segment that data so that the Mets can understand how, what their audience size looks like and the Yankees can understand what their audience size look like and um, be able to like distinguish some of this engagement that's happening in the app. To elaborate further, a uh, 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 game event potentially sends out to multiple se fan segment fans. Essentially, uh, let's say the Mets are playing the Yankees. A home run might uh, send a push notification to both Mets and Yankees fans who are interested in score changes. So when we report on this for our clubs, we need to be able to tease out this information to let them know how many were Mets fans and how many were Yankees fans. So, so Jimmy, can you uh, put your microphone a bit closer? Yeah, oh, thank sure you. Thing. Uh, so you're using Amazon Pinpoint as a solution to these uh, challenges, which is of course why you're here at AWS reInvent to talk about that. Can you describe for our audience the role that Pinpoint plays in addressing some of these use case requirements that you have and how that links back to some of these functional uh, requirements that you have as well? Yeah, there are a couple of ways um, that we use Pinpoint. Um, one is you know, Pinpoint has the ability for you to store information about a user, right? So when a user goes into the, the mobile app, they can say, hey, like, tell me about when the game starts or when my, uh, there's a pitching change or, you know, it goes in overtime, whatever it might be. Um, so we store those as user attributes within Pinpoint so that we can do that proper segmentation and target uh, the right audience when that game event happens. We can match it up to those users. Um, the second way that we use Pinpoint, um, which I think is a little more unorthodox here, is you know, we want to send out these messages um, in, uh, through uh, dynamic segmentation. Um, I think so Jimmy was talking about this. It's basically you have two teams playing each other, and these two teams change every day. right? So the Yankees fans are playing with the Mets fans, and the Yankees fans can be playing the Red Sox fans. Um, and so when we send out a push notification, we need to dynamically segment um, segment immediately when that happens. So we call Pinpoint to say, hey, create this segment now um, for this game event that's happening now, and then create this campaign right now and target that audience right now. Mm -hmm. And Pinpoint does that in milliseconds for us, so we're able to get that um, right to the device as soon as we can. I can imagine there's a scalability uh, part of it. Right? Can you talk a little bit about the scalability and how Pinpoint helps you like, to target the massive scale of the audience? Or? Yeah, so um, Pinpoint, you know, fully managed service for us. So we don't have to worry about, you know, if we send out too many of these campaigns for all these events that are happening at the yeah. same time, like, is that going to impact how one game is receiving notifications versus another? Um, so when we create these segments and we create these campaigns in Pinpoint, we fire them off, we say, you know, send these now. Like, we do that up to uh, 20, 20 per hour. So um, we create about, oh, for a typical game day, we send about, we create about a thousand campaigns. Um, on, in a, at peak, we create about 300 campaigns per hour and 20 campaigns per minute. 
And uh, the beauty of Amazon, essentially, um, at times when there are no games, we're not sending anything out, so we're not paying any additional costs there. But when when games happen, they tend to happen during like prime time, so a lot of games happen at the same time. Like potentially 10 MLB games are happening at the same time, 10 NHL games happening at the same time. Not to mention minor league baseball might be happening at the same time. So. During peak hours, we're setting a lot of campaigns. We're creating a lot of campaigns, and we're reaching millions and millions of uh, fans. But um, during the quiet periods, we're not setting any. So the beauty of Amazon Pinpoint is uh, we're paying for what we use, and when we're using it, we're using it a lot. What about major uh, event-based ev uh, event sporting events like the World Series? Are there particular challenges that come where there's a lot of games stacked on top of each other, or any other really uh, substantial highlights that you would call out during the course of the time they've been using the service where there's been particularly high impact? Specifically for Pinpoint, we did use it for sending push notifications during, out, during the World Series. We sent about 150 editorial campaigns. We sent up a, a for, for that and for the Stanley Cup for 2018, we sent about 46 editorial campaigns. All those campaigns reached millions and millions of customers. However, that for those particular events, there's actually that's only a small portion of the pie, since there are only uh, one game happening per day, essentially, yep. for MLB, for NHL. The bigger portion of it actually happens during the regular season for uh, both of for both sporting events. So for MLB during the regular season, we actually send out much, much more campaigns and much more um, um, push notifications during those times. But we definitely use it during those key uh, events. That's and we more of an the availability risk, right? You've got to make sure the service is there because you've only got that one opportunity to engage with the users around that particular event, I guess. Right, right, definitely. Yeah. So we talk a lot about push notification, but Pinpoint can be used as well for user engagement with emails, voice messages. Are there things you uh, use as well? So we don't use Pinpoint um, for email. We use Amazon SES for email okay. today. Um, but it is something that we've considered like rolling that into Pinpoint to use it as one platform to engage our customers through multi-channels. Right. Um, but uh, that, that's something that we're looking into. We've also investigated using the Pinpoint's custom channel feature, which is super awesome. It allows you to connect to other um, other services that aren't currently built into Pinpoint. We haven't launched anything official necessarily, but we are definitely looking into the, the, the custom channel feature that Pinpoint provides. I mean, general building uh, applications like this for so uh, massive audiences, what are the challenges that you see uh, were uh, hard to, uh, to solve in general? Um, so, you know, I mentioned about uh, segmentation and like figuring out who we should message for this particular um, event that's happening. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, one of them is like all of these topics that a user can be interested in, right? Like for each team, I think there are eight different types of notifications that a user can subscribe to. And for baseball, there are 22 teams. And so like, there's an explosion of these different types of preferences yeah. that a user can sign up in. Um, and so you know, being able to leverage Pinpoint to say, like, hey, like, let's shove all of that into Pinpoint. And then whenever we need to like, create a, like, this new segment you right. know, like, today, like right now, like, we can do that immediately and send out that notification. Like, that, that's awesome. And, and through the move to using Pinpoint, how has the user engagement improved? That? Did you see a massive uh, change or a massive difference? So I think there have been, um, so we launched earlier this year in time for the World Series and also in time for the Stanley Cup. We also use Pinpoint for the 2018 Stanley Cup. Um, we've noticed a lot of uh, enhancements uh, within Disney streaming services for that. Um, so the cost is one of them, right? So before we used Pinpoint, we had our own in-house push notification platform that ran on many, many EC2 instances. Um, so um, we had a Cassandra database that was running, like a very, very, like a 10-year-old version of Cassandra sitting on a, a cluster of EC2 instances. We had a bunch of queues, old queues that were running on EC2 instances. So there was a all lot of- All of that is gone. All of that is gone, yeah. Right. We like got rid of all of that, um, replaced it with Pinpoint as well as like a lot of serverless components. Um, yeah. We do a lot, of, a lot of lambdas, we do glue jobs for our custom reporting for the different teams. Um, and so, um, you know, that operational overhead, you know, needing the databases to, you know, every day care for this 10-year-old, like, Cassandra database, like, that is gone. Um, the cost I mentioned, like, it's more cost efficient for us, the way that we're using Pinpoint, than it is to pay for the EC2 instances. Um, we also get faster reports because um, with Pinpoint, uh, we get reports in two ways. One is using 
uh, the Kinesis Firehose stream, where they're dumping out all the ends for us in S3. Um, and so we're using Glue to figure out like reports for like on a per team basis. Um, and we also um, hit their export API to dump, you know, do a huge dump of all of the endpoints and pinpoint into S3, and then we do some analytics around that as well. Um, so we weren't able to do that on the old infrastructure um, to that speed. Yeah. Great, excellent. Uh, any further questions from the stream? Is that everything that we had? So there was one question. Uh, will Disney streaming be using Media Connect to serve streams? Do you know Media Connect? I do, um, but I'm not, I'm not able to speak to our Disney like video on demand streaming. Cool, so I want to thank you for joining us on twitch.tv slash AWS today. If you're interested in hearing more about how Disney streaming services use Amazon Pinpoint, we have a session here. So if you're on site at reInvent, uh, you can join our two guests together with our GM for AWS Digital User Engagement. So 3.15 tomorrow here in the Venetian. And like all sessions from AWS reInvent, that will be available on the Amazon Web Services YouTube channel just a day or so after it takes place. So if you are interested in following up, please jump onto the AWS YouTube channel and uh, check out that session there. It'll be available perpetually after AWS reInvent wraps up. Uh, thanks again for joining us on the, the stream today, guys. I really, really thank appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. And we will uh, see you soon after this short break. Thank you. Bye-bye.